amigas y bienvenidos a nuestra clase de español. Yo me llamo señorita Griffiths. Yo me llamo señorita Panascas. Okay, so um, today we're going to be learning a little bit of Spanish, but first of all, um, I've got a question for you. What do you think of when you think of Spanish and Spain? What pops into your head? Oh, good question. I think the sun. When I think of Spain, I think of sunny weather. Amazing. Anything else? Mm, let's think. I definitely think of people dancing. Pretty much like a senorita dancing like this. Amazing. So, when we ask some people what they thought of when they thought of Spain, here are just a few of the stereotypes that they thought of. So, paella, coco the film, sombreros, flamenco dancers, and of course the sun and the beach. So, first of all, we're going to learn a little bit about cognates. Now, do you know what cognates are, Miss? I do. So, a cognate is when the word is exactly the same or really similar as what it is in English as to what it is in another language. Perfect. So, we've got a few examples in Spanish here. So, concert is this. How do you think that's pronounced? Mmm. Um, concierto? Good. Yeah, very nearly. So, concierto. Can we say it? Concierto. Can you guys say it? Good. <laughs> Next one, we say ilusión. Ilusión. Muy bien. Familia. Familia. Especial. Especial. Problema. Problema. Y vocabulario. Vocabulario. So those are just a few words that are similar in English and in Spanish to get you started. Okay? Okay, so we're going to have a little conversation now. So the first thing that you might ask somebody when you meet them is Hola, como te llamas? Can you have a go at saying that? Okay. Hola, como te llamas? And what do you think that means? Um, hola, hello, mm -hmm. como te llamas? What is your name? Perfect. Or what are you called? Brilliant. So we'd say Hola, como te llamas? And then we would respond with Hola, me llamo Bart. ¿Cómo te llamas? Yo me llamo María. So, remind me what's the question for what are you called? ¿Cómo te llamas? Muy bien. And how do you say I am called? Me llamo. Excellent. So, what I'd like you to do now is have a little practice. Practicamos en pareja. So, in your pairs, have a little practice. And if you could get your teacher to stop the video now so you can practice. Okay, so what else could we add to our conversation then? What do you think? Um, well, we've already asked each other what each other's called, mm -hmm. so now I think it would be good to ask how we are. Amazing. So in Spanish, we say, ¿Qué tal? for how are you? Can you have a go saying that? ¿Qué tal? Good. And then there are lots of different ways that we could respond to that. So we could say, muy bien. Muy bien. Bastante bien. Bastante bien. 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 Mal. Mal. Or fatal. Fatal. So, let's have a little go at this conversation between us then. So, I'll start that. Hola, ¿cómo te llamas? Hola, me llamo Señorita Panesquez. ¿Cómo te llamas? Me llamo Señorita Griffiths. ¿Qué tal? Muy bien. ¿Y tú? Mm, fatal. Brilliant. So maybe you could now have a little practice with the how are you as well. So if you have a little look on your work booklets now, you will have this little sentence builder box. Now we are going to be using this to describe ourselves. So let's look at this question, como eres? What do you think that means? Essentially, isn't it like asking somebody about themselves? So what are you like as a person? Perfect. So, in English we might say, what are you like? And I might say, I have blue eyes and brown hair. So, how would I say that in Spanish? Oh, you want to say I have uh, blue eyes and brown hair? Yeah. Okay. Tengo uh, los ojos azules y el pelo castaño. Muy bien. Perfecto. What about if I wanted to say I don't have 
brown eyes and blonde hair. I don't have brown eyes and blonde hair. Okay, uh, no tengo los ojos marrones y what was the hair colour meant? Blonde hair. Uh, blonde hair. El pelo rubio. Muy bien, excelente. Um, so, I'm going to ask Miss now to describe herself using this box. Look what she does and then in a second you're going to have a go yourselves. Okay, so to describe myself, I would start here and I would say, Tengo los ojos verdes mm -hmm. y el pelo castaño. No tengo los ojos grises y el pelo rizado. Yo tengo el pelo liso. Amazing. So you can see how Mix has added some extra details in there as well, saying what she has got and what she hasn't got. So if you get your teacher to pause the recording now, you can have a go at telling your partner what you're like and what you're not like. Okay, and last activity then. In your booklets, you have got a little section that looks like this. Now, first of all, we've got a little person, so you can draw yourself on there, you can draw the clothes, you can design your hair, your eyes, your face, and then what you need to do afterwards is to describe yourself on this little template, okay? Make sure you're doing it in Spanish, and you can use this box to help you describe what you look like. And if you can, Extra challenge, if you've drawn some clothes on yourself and you know some colours, you can label the colours too. But, I have a question, Miss. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm, I'm a French teacher and I go to France all the time. Why do I have to learn Spanish? Good question. What do you think all of these people have in common? So, we've got Shakira, she's a singer. We've got Dora the Explorer. We've got Rafael Nadal, he's a tennis player. Will Ferrell, Gwyneth Paltrow, they're actors. And we've got Camila Cabello there, she's a singer. What do you think they have in common? Hmm, good question. Well, you've got a mixture of boys and girls, so that can't be the commonality. Mm -hmm. um, Dora the Explorer is a cartoon, so she's quite different. Mm -hmm. But what do they all have in common? I think I've got it. Go on. They all speak Spanish. Amazing, they all speak Spanish. Now, Spanish isn't just spoken in Spain, it's spoken in loads of countries around the world, in 22 different countries around the world. So, even if you don't go on holiday to Spain, even if you're a French teacher, you can still communicate with people in Spanish if you learn Spanish. So it's a really good reason to learn Spanish, okay? So, that brings us to the end of our little class today. I'm just going to explain a little summer project to you that you can do. Now, this is entirely optional. You don't have to do it, but if you can, it'd be really, really good. We'd love to see um, what you've done when you come in September. So, what we'd like you to do is to do some research into one of the 22 countries in the world where Spanish is the official language or where Spanish is spoken. So, that could be Spain. It could be Mexico, it could be Cuba, it could be Colombia, wherever you like, okay? Um, and do some research into that and tell us all about it when you come here in September. I've got a question, Miss. Yeah. Do I do my research in English or Spanish? It's up to you. If you can do it in Spanish, that's amazing, but English is absolutely fine, okay? I'll do it in English, Miss. Amazing. So, just to finish off, I'm going to show you a little map. All of these countries in orange are the countries that Spanish is spoken in around the world. So there's loads of different places in the world where Spanish is spoken. Um, here we go. So, I'm going to say muchas gracias, Miss. Muchas gracias también. Y hasta luego, chicas. Adios. Adios.